Drinking Thai chili, yeah. <laughs> doing a chili podcast yes. in the chili cold room. Okay, we're done. <laughs> Estamos acá en ruta00.com, estamos en Ballast Point con, nuevamente con Col Colby Chandler. Thank you, Colby. Uh, thanks for visiting. Uh, it's good to see you up north here. Last time we had a chat down south uh, for the first Meet the Brewers night, I think, right? In Santiago. Yeah. This is our Miramar facility. Uh, we run four other breweries in San Diego and we also opened up a tasting room and kitchen up in Temecula, about an hour north of us. Um, This is a 107,000 square foot facility, so a nice big building, a uh, huge restaurant inside, and uh, also this beautiful copper 150 barrel brew house behind us. Uh, we kind of rescued it out of Lord Germany, started brewing on it about a year and a half ago, and it's been uh, charging away ever since. So a lot of sculpin being brewed on this brew house right now. So you mentioned that any, any kind of beer can be bought uh, brewed here, right? Most of the year round production beers that we do, Um, that you are available all the time, especially down in Chile, uh, are mostly done here, especially if they're bottled or canned, then uh, it's being done in this facility. If you're getting the bigger bottles, the 22 ounces, then you're probably getting it done at our other production facility where a lot of the specialty beers get brewed. Yeah, I, I just want to mention that I'm testing this with, with Thai chili. With Thai, Thai chili, Thai chili Wahoo Wheat. So it's our, uh, our wit beer. So orange peel, coriander, curacao in our normal wit beer with some oats. And then we throw in some Thai chilies, some lime, and a little bit of ginger as well. So uh, yeah, it's really, it's really spicy. Yeah, so it's, it's really yeah. Thai chilies in there. Yeah. <laughs> You'd expect it to be a little bit spicy, yeah. but nice. It's a nice yeah. heat. It's not too hot. You know, yeah. you are sweating a little bit. I think. Yeah. yeah. So walk around this big yeah. facility. So now we're working outside with uh, rocket chips. Rocket chips. <laughs> <laughs> so the ones on this side of us. Uh, 750 barrel fermenters and then the ones right here uh, we just started putting in we have eight of these these are uh, 1500 barrels so twice the size so if you think of a sculpin you're probably close to a ton and a half of dry hopping in just the one one beer so it's probably more than uh, most breweries in Chile use in, in two years All right, next. Yeah, next. <laughs> so, which is uh, this stuff? You mentioned this is like the, your new brew house? Right, exactly. If, if those are the rockets out there, then this is the space station in here. Um, this is brand new. Uh, we just started brewing on this yesterday. It's a 300 barrel brew house, so twice the size of the copper brew house. Uh, five brews to fill the 1500 barrel fermenters outside. So, uh, we'll run this many many brews throughout the day so uh, one water ton uh, two boil kettles uh, i think a holding vessel and then a centrifuge for uh, clarity at the end there so one of the bigger uh, breweries in southern california for sure and that's because of the, all the demand you have like you mentioned you will, you will be like in all the 50, 50 states yeah our goal is to be in all 50 states by uh, june Uh, obviously, we're going to pick up some more countries here and there. Probably open up a little, a couple little satellite restaurant and breweries uh, if that all works out, and just keep growing. You know, uh, we've had a really good business plan, and we have a phenomenal team of 570 employees that are putting out projects like this 300 barrel brew house behind me, and just not only uh, keeping up with the demand, but also keeping up with the quality and the shelf life and the flavor of the beer. Let's walk up two stories yeah. and look at the top. So we're now uh, above, uh, well, not above, but at the same level of uh, the new brew house, right? Yeah, this is where you get to throw the hops in and uh, play with the screen and do all that kind of stuff. But it really gives you a good vantage point to see the brewery behind us uh, and everything that's going on from the bright tanks all the way over in the back there that you know the finished beer is carbonated in for packaging to the canning line right behind us you can see some oak barrels over there that we're aging beer in and then the uh, bottling line also behind us all used equipment so it was uh, affordable to get into kept our costs down both lines probably do about 400 bottles a minute and I see you have like a, a small small fermenters back there 
Does Sweat like to experiment? Actually, the small fermenter back there, the tall one, you can see that was our first ever fermenter that we ever bought. Really? Yeah, that was, you know, 20 years ago. Um, that now we use for dry hopping. So we put all the dry hops in there and then the dry hops get pushed up on top of those really high 1500 barrel and 750 barrel fermenters so that we're dry hopping from the top and letting the hops kind of fall down through the beers. So yeah, that, that original fermenter was a 30 barrel fermenter. It would take two batches of, of, uh, on the brew house to fill up that fermenter. Okay, let's go to, to the next stop. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> well, this is uh, just like we have the packaging line for the cans and the bottles. This is our kegging line for the most part. So a line where we can put the kegs on dirty uh, the outside of the keg will get cleaned, then the inside will get cleaned, and then it'll get filled, and then put back off on the end. So basically everything's done on the same line, so we're not having to clean and then fill everything by hand afterwards. We just put in a 300 barrel brewery, but we also have a 5 barrel brewery that we do experimental beers on. Uh, we release brand new beers, you know, two to three times a week. This is a brown ale, uh, it's uh, the Brown Fairy kind of uh, built off of absinthe, the green fairy, you know, so the same wormwood and uh, kind of black licorice and anise flavors that you would get out of uh, absinthe we're doing in the beer as well. So we just have so many just creative beers coming out of that location. And it's all draft and those beers are usually only uh, put on draft and available to the public in our tasting rooms, so the five tasting rooms that we have. So let's go to the next stop. Okay, sounds good. Uh, this is all packaged beer, ready to go out, be sold, put on the trucks. Uh, we're doing about 70 semis a day, or 70 semis a week in the five-day work week. The cold room is 22,000 square feet, so this cold room is actually bigger than the building that our, our last brewery, you know, was in. So it's just constantly expanding, non-stop, every month, every year. So the event has been really growing. Last year we grew 125%. Yeah, and I wanted to ask you about the um, IPO, the mm -hmm. initial public offering. Sure. What, what is, does it mean for Ballast Point to, to, to go out and, and be like a public company? Um, actually, we, we had every attention of going and doing the IPA, IPO, getting it ready. And then uh, we had a company come in, uh, Constellation. They're brand managers for just amazing products uh, in the United States and in Mexico and around the world. Uh, Svetka Vaca, Sweden, Opus, Mandavi, uh, they do the Modelo Group, you know, with Corona, Pacifico, Negro Modelo. So they come in, they came in and purchased Ballast Point. So they purchased it 100%. So we now work for Constellation. So we're going to be able to take advantage of, you know, what Constellation can bring for us, you know, as far as uh, lowering costs on certain things, you know, bigger items, uh, tapping into their distribution chain around the country and uh, just kind of uh, making sure that we can guarantee that you'll be drinking Sculpin 20, 30, 40 years from now. So Sculpin's going to be around not only in the United States, but worldwide for a long time to come, probably after I leave this planet. So, you know, you got to be pretty proud of that. Yeah, that's really interesting because it means that you will be able to be, like you said, in other more places, other more people yeah. will be able yeah, to yeah. enjoy and I really feel that Constellation, um, by buying Ballast Point, is investing in craft beer. Um, they're not investing in the demise of craft beer. If we can get our beer into a place that doesn't normally have craft beer, and we can turn somebody and have the light bulb go off, that they might like a full flavored beer, then they're going to come to other breweries. I'm proud of that. And, and how about Chile? Is it is it like a growing market for you? For you? Is it like a, just your yeah? I mean, it's a steady growing market. Um, obviously, once we get in, you know, we you got to get that foundation first. You know, to go, you, you have to get the trust of the people buying the beer that the little bit extra money that they're spending on the beer, they're going to get a quality product that that made the trip was shipped properly, cold down there. We've took all our precautions to get it into your hands as fresh as possible. So, you know, that's the foundation, and then you just kind of be, keep building on that. You have good people on the ground that are kind of helping out, you know, Birvana and all those guys down there are doing a great job, and, and you just slowly kind of get traction. A lot of things don't happen overnight, you know. You gotta build relationships and talk with people in a cold room, yeah, you know. Like, like, like now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly.
exactly. So it, it's it's all good, you know. We just want to keep concentrating on making great products, and then the products sell themselves. Whether it's Chile, San Diego, you know, Europe, Alaska, you know, if you're making a good product, you'll you'll make passionate fans. So so this is the room where you keep all the um, beer for the restaurant, right? Right, so this is just a draft beer only and backup for the store. We actually have three of these cold rooms on site. This one feeds 90 taps, uh, only ballast point beer and a cup of water. Uh, everything is stainless the whole way so we can clean everything. All the taps get cleaned at least every two weeks, if not sooner. Uh, when a beer changes, uh, it gets cleaned. It's so important for us when you walk through the brewery and you do all of that work to make the beer and then it comes here and it's not served properly then what's the point we want you to have the best experience with ballast point when you come to our locations that you can possibly have from the tanks in the back to the glass that's in front of you this cold room probably turns over every two days so all this beer lasts about two to three days um, um, from all these 90 cups which, which one is like the most popular or, or isn't there like a, the most popular uh, plus point beer? Uh, generally Sculpin and the variations of Sculpin are usually our, our most popular. Uh, the pineapple is really going good right now because it's kind of brand new. Uh, kegging wise, uh, our pale ale, the Kolsch beer that we do, is one of the most popular kegs to go, you know, when people come in. So it kind of changes around, you know. None of the beers last very long especially when we're doing those small batch beers and we bring it up to this restaurant. Uh, this feeds a restaurant that has 565 seats. So it's the second largest restaurant in San Diego. Let's go to our, our final um, yeah, stop. Yeah, go walk, <laughs> maybe uh, throw the movie on, walk through the restaurant. Yeah, okay. Beer. What, what are, you, are you drinking? Um, I'm doing a blend. So I did a uh, half grunion and half dorado. I call it a dunion. You drink a few of these and you're done. You're <laughs> dunion. And I haven't asked you before, but uh, about yourself. What's your role here at Palace Point? Uh, how many t uh, how many years you've been working with Palace Point? Uh, this July will be my 19th anniversary. I started as a I was a home brewer working in the restaurant business. Uh, got a job at Homebrew Mart, which is how Ballast Point started. We still run a homebrew store since 1992. Uh, started as a clerk, became the third brewer at Ballast Point uh, after the owners, and uh, ran that location for about 16 years, the homebrew store, and started doing more specialty beers uh, as the production facility kind of started taking off. Uh, developed a bunch of beers that we're drinking today. You know, the Dorado was one of them, and uh, Sculpin was developed there when, under my... Uh, tutelage a little bit. We opened up the brew pub downtown, uh, Little Italy, and helped design that brewery, kind of got that program off the ground, and now I'm the vice president and specialty brewer of the company. Uh, I brew with our employees, an employee brewing program. I still get to brew some of my recipes. I get to travel around the world, talking to very nice people like yourself, uh, telling the story of Ballast Point. Pretty much the best job in the world, I think. Yeah, I also think the same. Uh, what do you think? What do you remember most from Chile? I love the people. I love the passion. Uh, I love seeing kind of the the industry down there. Still, as a young industry, it reminded me a lot of you know the early '90s in the United States. Um, and uh, I am almost have gone through all my Mercan that I brought back from Chile. I've been putting it on everything. So. Uh, uh, the food was fantastic down there, but ultimately, you know, it's the people that make any place. And just that passion that was coming through and, and you know, the fact that, that 
it was still kind of a business for them a little bit. I think everybody still needs to learn how to play together a little bit better. And everybody needs to really help each other make better and better beer so that, you know, when a new customer comes in and has that craft beer for the first time, it's a good beer. And they're going to go to the next brewery and get another good beer and the next brewery and the next brewery because as soon as they get a bad beer, then that's what hurts us all in the long run. So, yeah, that passionate people and that, that kind of new excitement and that new beer industry down there is pretty, pretty exciting. So, do you think perhaps someday it will be... Will it be like a Merken IPA? I don't, yeah. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? Merken, I don't know. I think I'd like a little, you almost need like something a little smokier. I'd almost say like a, maybe like a smoky amber ale or a Scottish ale with Merken in it would probably be pretty nice. Yeah. Don't threaten me. I'll do it. I'll do it. For now, I'm pretty happy with putting it on a hard boiled egg or a steak or anything I can find myself putting it on. So, pretty good. No, well, that would be really interesting to, to see like a, Beer with Mirken from Ballas Point. Yeah. yeah. Well, th thank you very much, uh, Colby, for all this, for the tour, explanation, the history. I don't know if you have any final words, anything you want to. Looking forward to getting back south again. You know, I, uh, I'd love to hit up Argentina and Brazil and get back to Santiago again. I, and uh, like yourself, man, I invite anybody from not only Chile but around the world to stop in and have a few beers with us. Uh, it's, it's a pretty nice place to hang out. San Diego's got some okay weather. Probably some of the best weather on the planet. Some of the best beer. So, thanks. Thanks for coming in. Okay, thank you very much. I, I hope to see you again in yeah, Santiago. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Cheers. 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 Thank you.